the phones we've got mike parry broadcaster and journalist hi mike uh, good morning to you both oh it's morning. good i like mike on the show he's, he's a right stirrer and uh and he gets <laughs> he gets everybody riled uh, mike I, i'm mm. guessing you're getting carried away and you're daring to dream well i don't get carried away uh alfie to be honest mm. the first world cup i ever covered was 1990 right oh. um and that was italy and you know what happened there we yeah. were right Semis. It was the famous uh, Paul Gascoigne tears competition. And you know what? Last night had the feel of that about it to me. Mm. You know, the sort of what, what happened when we got into this competition was we our expectations have been dampened down by two appalling tournaments in the past. OK, the last two tournaments we've been to were a disaster. We got we, we didn't even get through the qualifiers. We were humiliated and, and we came home in the um, in the last mm. one before Germany played their second game. So that that has changed the nation. I don't know if you've noticed up there in the northeast, but certainly I have in the rest of the country that White Van Man has not so far been flying as many flags as St George on his wing mm-hmm. as as in the past. You're and absolutely I think that's right. Because, I think that's because we have a new expectation of reality. Now I think you'll find that'll get revved up because last night was such a critical victory. You get three points in your first game, you can almost guarantee that you're going through to the uh, round of 16, OK? The two teams left to play. Panama, we should beat. You know, most people think Panama's a canal or a hat. They don't even <laughs> realise it's a country. And, and then we face the Belgians, who are an incredibly good team. But mm. by them, we should have six points in the bag. So I'm not getting carried away. And you're absolutely right, um, both of you, um, to, you know, try and temper, you know, the excitement. But the excitement now has a foundation on which we can build. So, so the the I saw a bit of the Belgium game. Belgium, as you said, do yeah. look like a completely different outfit. Yeah. I mean, how far do you realistically think England can go? Well, I'm sure we'll get into the round of 16 now. And what's yeah. interesting, because um, Steph was outlining there the number of great footballing nations who got off to a less than spectacular start. We all thought we knew the path through this tournament by assuming that, you know, Brazil would win their opening game, that Germany would, that Mexico wouldn't sort of, you know, put a spanner in the works and all that kind of stuff. Well, all that's now gone. So we don't know really now. You can't guess now who we're going to face in, in the last 16 and even more so in the quarterfinals because if the plan had gone to plan, we would have faced Germany in the quarterfinals. And normally speaking, when we meet the Germans, that's it. But the Germans are either not the force they were or they've already been holed below the waterline. So expectations are good. The, the other thing is, just look at the game last night, and you won't get carried away, but in the first half, England had six shots on target in an international game. The last time we did that, believe it or not, was against Portugal in the semi-final of 1966. So, so we, we haven't been as powerful and we haven't been as resolute and impressive in an international match for 50 years, over 50 years. Do you reckon I heard Terry Butcher and I heard Chris Waddle this morning yeah. on the BBC absolutely scathing about the refereeing, about the standard of refereeing and about the, the diving and about the, yeah. you know, all, the, all that stuff Tunisia were trying to pull on us. Yeah. Are England yeah. sometimes too honest for their own good? No, I don't think we are. And I think Gareth Southgate is the sort of guy who will shrug that off. At the end of the day, what was the result? So we all know what the result was. What's the point now on going back and examining, you know, the faults that lay within the match? We had to cope with what we knew would be, um, you know, professional tactics from the Tunisians, to, to put it politely, and we cope with it very well indeed. And the difficulty you've got is that when you're playing in a World Cup and the referees are international, you're not playing the same rules that you play in the Premier League in this country. We know what referees allow and don't allow in this country. We don't know as well about the, um, the allowances from referees abroad. But, you know, I don't want to talk about that. I mean, look, I know Terry Butcher very well. He's a great ex-England international. And these guys, having been professionals themselves, will focus on those aspects of the game. But the only aspect of the game which me and millions of fans are focusing on is what was the result, how many points did we get when we move on on Sunday and play Panama I have a sense of enormous optimism that um, something good is about to happen. Thank you very much. Always great to speak to you, Mike. Mike Parry there, broadcaster, journalist.
So catch me if you can, cause I'm the England man. And what you looking at is a master plan. We ain't no hooligans, this ain't a football song. Three lions on my chest, 